before we begin, I just want to say a couple of words about Faust, you know, because uh, uh, it's, um, it's an unusual programming language, uh, and uh, I'm sure most of you never heard of it before. Uh, um, I'm sure people like Karma heard about Faust before, but uh, what, is, uh, what is Faust? Okay, so first, I, I just want to, I just want to try to make this a little bit more interactive than my first uh, lecture, you know, but, um, but uh, can you give me a couple of examples of programming language that you used uh, in the past and that you think can be used for audio signal processing? So, so here I'm just like gonna like write them down, you know, and uh, from uh, high level to low level, right? So, uh, so for those of you who never heard about this terminology, High level means that uh, it's a programming language which is close to humans, so it's very easy to use. Okay, and a uh, low-level programming language is a machine is uh, is a programming language which is very close to the machine, so it's way less legible by a human and uh, way uh, more understandable directly by a machine. Okay, so first. Can you give me a couple of examples of computer music, music technology programming language that some of you might have used in the past? Please. I already said a couple before. Chuck. Yeah, somebody that said Chuck, yeah. Chuck, great. Okay, so I'm gonna write Chuck down uh, here. That's our first uh, programming language. So Chuck, uh, Chuck uh, was made by Ga Wong. And, uh, and, uh, and it's a fairly high level programming uh, language. Okay, one more. Tidal, maybe? Tidal, I think it's a Lisp-like language, T-I-D-A-L. Uh, yeah, so that one is definitely much lower level than this. Uh, so I'll say Idol, Lisp. Tidal, right, T-I-D-A-L. Ah, title. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I was like, I, I never heard of this thing. Title. Okay. I mean, Lisp. Yeah, Lisp is fairly low level in comparison of Chuck. So, uh, sorry. More? C sound? C sharp? Right? C sound. So, sorry. Can you, can you say that? Oh, sorry. I'll just put it in the chat. But like the letter C and then sound. C sound, okay, good. So C sound is lower level than Chuck, uh, definitely higher level than title. Okay, and C sound is sort of the it's the father of them all, basically. That's like the that's like the sort of first uh, program language for music technology. Okay. Other program languages. Max. Max MSP? Yes. Great. That's a good example. That's a good one. Okay, Max MSP is higher level than Chuck because it's a program language that has a user interface. You know, you can, uh, and so you program with uh, patches that you, um, uh, where you have like boxes that you connect together with wires, you know, like so there, it's not a script based programming language. So it's, <coughs> it's a graphical programming language. So, uh, Cool. More? Can we have like some low level programming languages? Like, or at least lower C++. level? C++. C++, great. Okay, that one is great. Okay. Maurice also added Super Collider. Super Collider, okay. So where are we gonna put Super Collider? I think we can put Super Collider uh, here, okay. Uh, assembly. Assembly, great, thank you. <laughs> Okay, I, I think that's uh, I think that's a good uh, that's a good list uh, already. You know, like so uh, so uh, if you want to do real time audio signal processing on a computer uh, or even a microcontroller, in most cases it's always going to go down to C plus plus, and uh, so you can't really use Python. You can't really use Java. You can't really use like any of these programming languages to do like efficient uh, real-time audio signal processing. So if you want to have like a decent latency and, uh, and if you don't want to kill your CPU, uh, you'll have to use C++, okay? So basically all the languages that we have here 
they're all written in C++. Uh, and uh, so that's why I'm saying that it always goes down to, uh, to C++. Okay. So Faust is somewhere here. Uh, so it's between uh, standard, like traditional music technology programming languages and uh, lower level programming languages, uh, which uh, like, and for instance, C++, you know, because that, that's the, the one that actually matters for, uh, for, for audio. So what Faust does, uh, if you use it like in the most fundamental way is that it will translate, so compile, a Faust, because Faust is a compiled uh, language, it will compile a Faust program into C++. And then once it's compiled to C++, you can compile to you can compile it to many different things. You know, like you, you can make like smartphone apps. You can make uh, uh, you can uh, put it on a microcontroller. You can make a standalone. You know, like so, so so you go from Faust to C++ and then to something else, basically. And uh, and that's kind of the whole idea of Faust. You know, and uh, and so Faust can be used to make uh, plugins for C Sound, Super Collider, Chuck, Max MSP. Because it's lower level, you know. Like, so if you want to make your own Max MSP object, uh, you can use Faust for that. And uh, same for Chuck and Super Collider and C Sound. Okay. Okay. So uh, I think I said enough about uh, Faust uh, here, uh, and I just want to show you a couple of examples and uh, and show you how to use uh, how to use uh, Faust. So let me share a different screen with you this time. So. I'm back to uh, this window. Okay, so in this class, we're going to use Faust through the Faust web ID because you can actually use Faust online, and that's by far the easiest way to use uh, to use Faust. So uh, I'm going to type uh, in the chat uh, the URL for uh, for this. Uh, okay, so. Please uh, try to go to this URL. So it's faustid.gram.fr. There we go. Cool. So uh, so we're going to use Faust online uh, because uh, it's easier. Because installing Faust on some platforms can be uh, can be kind of a pain. Uh, but online, you know, it just works, you know, and uh, it's easy for prototyping, you know, and there is no limitation in terms of using Faust online for what we're going to do in this class. So, uh, so um, yeah, I want to say a couple of things about that. So uh, the the online version of Faust uh, uses uh, very uh, cutting edge technology, uh, which are only available in Google Chrome and Firefox. Uh, if you use Safari, it will probably work, but there might be issues. So I strongly uh, not recommend you to use uh, Safari for that. So, so use either Firefox or uh, Google Chrome. Uh, and uh, Windows, uh, Edge, and, uh, no, uh, and uh, Internet Explorer, like that's even worse. Okay, so uh, so please uh, please use Firefox or Google Chrome. Um, there are not really any difference between using the two, uh, except that in Google Chrome, there is MIDI support. So it means that if you have a MIDI keyboard at home and you want to control something that is happening uh, in uh, Faust in the web browser, uh, you'll only be able to do that if you use uh, Google Chrome. You won't be able to do that with, uh, with Firefox. Uh, I would say that it tends to be a little bit more stable in Firefox. So, uh, so personally, I use Firefox, and also I'm using Linux, and uh, and uh, Firefox works much better on Linux than Google Chrome. So, uh, so yeah. Cool. Uh, is everyone okay? Or cool, great. So, um, let me uh, zoom in here. Okay. Uh, here you probably have mono, so I'm going to put mono back. Okay, and I'm just going to get rid of this example. Um, okay, so in Faust you can write code in the editor, which is here, uh, and uh, and the most simple Faust program that you can write is process equals one. Okay, and so you see that one of the cool thing about Faust is that uh, the program that you write uh, in Faust gets automatically 
transformed into a block diagram. So that's very uh, good for debugging. So, uh, so it means that whatever you write here, you will see the corresponding block diagram uh, in this window here in the Faust web, uh, web ID. Okay. So, um, so what does this uh, do? Uh, so we can actually run this program and to run it, you just click on run. Okay. And, uh, and then there is a tab which just appears here. Okay. And uh, in this untitled window, uh, with nothing in it uh, is basically uh, what corresponds to the, the 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 program that we just wrote, you know. And uh, and if you want to kill the program, if you want to stop it, uh, you just close the tab. Okay. So run and then close the tab. Okay. So can someone guess what this program is doing? It's doing it's doing something. It's emitting a, a, a constant stream of ones. Absolutely. So, in a, in signal processing, that's what, like, what's a stream? A, a process or a signal? Yeah it's, yeah, it's a signal, and it's basically what we call DC. a DC offset, right? It's a it's a DC component. So basically, if you run this program, uh, you will probably hear a little click when you start. It. So so I'll, I'll stop talking. And then when you click, you hear it. And then when you stop it, you hear it again. So the reason why you hear it twice is because when you start the program, the membrane of the speaker on your laptop or whatever you're using uh, for uh, watching this lecture is being pushed forward. Because one is like the maximum signal that you can output. You know, like So, uh, so basically just like push the membrane of the speaker forward. And then when you stop the program, when you click on the on the little cross, then basically the membrane of the speaker gets back to zero, you know, and uh, and so uh, so that's why you hear a click when it starts. That's like the ba, you know, and uh, and then uh, and when when you stop the program, ba, you hear it again. Okay, cool. So that's pretty uh, useless. <laughs> But it's good to know, you know, like, and uh, and it's uh, and uh, and uh, it's uh, it's once again the most uh, simple thing that you can write in Faust. So in most cases in Faust, you're gonna use libraries, okay? And uh, Faust comes with a lot of signal uh, processing libraries, and uh, to use them, you have to import stdfaust.lib. Okay, and stdfaust.lib is um, is a way to access all the Faust libraries, all the standard Faust libraries from a single standpoint. Uh, so from the same place, basically. And, uh, and so as long as you import this, uh, you will get basically access to all the Faust libraries. Okay. And so now we're gonna write uh, what some people call the hello world of computer music. So, uh, so, you know, like for those of you who never wrote a computer program, you know, like the hello world, it's the most basic program that you can write and usually just says hello world, you know, like uh, displays hello world. We're not gonna do that. Uh, it's not gonna say hello world because that's very hard to do. Uh, but uh, the hello world of computer music is usually just synthesizing a sine wave, okay? So how do we synthesize a sine wave in Faust? Well, for that, uh, we can use a function and the sine wave function in Faust is os.osc. So OS stands for oscillators. That's the uh, that's the oscillators library uh, that we get access through stdfaust.lib, and then OSC is the sine wave function. Okay, and can someone guess what the what the argument of this function is going to be? There is only one one parameter. Frequency. Yes, great, thank you. So, uh, hertz, so here we hopefully. can say, for example, 440 hertz, uh, which is going to be a, uh, which is going to be what? A. A, great. Uh, and so, if we run this program, we hear a sine wave. Cool. So, so that's already a lot, you know, because if you had to write that from scratch in C++, it would have taken you a lot of, lot of time. 
Okay, so now some of you might wonder why the block diagram here uh, doesn't really correspond to uh, uh, what's written uh, in the Faust uh, web editor here. And the reason for that is because what we see here is the actual implementation of the sine wave oscillator. So, uh, so that's the content of OSC here, of the OSC function. And, uh, and so uh, if you analyze it, uh, for those of you who know about that kind of stuff, you know, you'll see very quickly that it's a wave table based oscillator. I'm not gonna go into details here, you know, because that's not the point of this class, you know, like, but, uh, but, um, but uh, yeah, this is a wave table based uh, oscillator. Cool. So great. Uh, so if we keep the program running, uh, we can actually uh, change the, the frequency uh, of it in real time. It will recompile itself, you know, so. Okay. So, uh, so that's cool, you know, like, so it means that uh, whenever the program is running, you don't have to uh, like stop it and rerun it, you know, like um, uh, it is being recompiled on the fly in the fast web editor as you write the program, okay? So uh, that's cool. Uh, we can make sound. And uh, personally, I don't really like sine waves uh, because um, they're annoying. And, uh, and so instead of using a sine wave now, I'm going to use a sawtooth wave. You know, And a sawtooth wave is a wave that has the shape of a sawtooth, right? So, uh, so I'm going to call sawtooth. You know? and, uh, and the sound it makes is much nicer, or it's a little bit nicer. Right, and so uh, so for uh, the next example, I'm going to keep using the the sawtooth wave. Great. So uh, that's great, uh, but uh, but we're not going to go very far with that. Like this is definitely not something that we can use as a musical instrument. So uh, so to actually turn that into a musical instrument, we need to be able to control the frequency of the site of the sawtooth wave in real time. So so we can control it by changing it by hand, you know, and then it takes some time to recompile. But, uh, but that's not a very practical way to do it, right? Like uh, here, we want to have a user interface element that allows us to change the frequency of the sawtooth wave uh, in real time. So the first thing I need to do for that is to create a variable. And, uh, and to create a variable in Faust, uh, you just have to give it a name. So here I'm going to call it, call it f for frequency. And I'm going to say that f is equal to 400, okay? And then I'm gonna be able to use f as the parameter of my function, okay? And so if I run the program again, the result is the same, right? Uh, it's just that now my frequency is declared outside of uh, this line here, okay? So this still doesn't allow me to change the, the frequency in real time. For that, I need to assign a user interface element to F. And uh, in Faust, there are a couple of standard user interface elements that you can use. And the one that I'm gonna use here is a horizontal slider. So H slider, okay. And H slider uh, takes a couple of arguments as an input. The first one is going to be the name of the slider in the interface. So here I'm going to call it freak for frequency. Okay. So that's the name that's going to be displayed when I run the program uh, for that slider. Okay. The next argument, you see that arguments are separated using uh, commas here. And uh, the, the next argument is going to be the default value of the slider. Uh, when I start the program, and uh, and so uh, so here I'm going to say 400. Okay, so so like when I'm going to start the program, the the position of the slider is going to be 400. The next value is going to be the minimum value of the slider. So here I'm going to say, uh, for example, 50. So and those are hertz, you know, because we're controlling a frequency. So so 50 hertz is a very very low frequency, and uh, the next argument is the highest frequency of the slider. So the, the highest value of the slider, and uh, here I'm going to say a thousand, uh, so that it's not too painful if we go there. You know, like it was, uh, it's not a super high pitch. And finally, the last argument is going to be uh, the step. So it's going to be the precision of the slider. So here, if I say one, it means that the 
every time I'm going to move the slider, it's going to go one by one. You know, so it's going to be like 50, 51, 52, 53, blah, blah, blah. If I were to put 0 0.1 here, then I would go uh, 0 0.1 by 0 0.1. You know, like so 50, 50.1, 50.2, et cetera. Okay, so here I'm controlling the, the precision of the slider. Cool. So now if I run the program, I have a slider. Okay. And this slider now allows me to control the frequency and so the pitch of the sound that I'm generating in real time. So I can already make music with that, uh, or sort of. <clears throat> Do you have any questions about this very simple Faust program? So in Faust, in general, all programs are going to look like that. Uh, you're going to have a line for imports. You're going to have a line or a couple of lines for uh, the user interface. And then you're going to have a line for, or a couple of lines for your um, DSP, so your sound processing algorithm. And by the way, because Faust is a functional programming language, and, uh, and that's where uh, it might get tricky for some of you, um, it can actually declare things uh, in any order you want. Want. So it means that we could have put the process line first. It still works. It doesn't really change anything, right? So there is no order to declare things. And uh, the main consequence of that is that you cannot redeclare something. So since, since you can order things the way you want, uh, for example, F here can only be declared once, you know? So, so you can't just like rewrite F another time and assign it a new value. That's not how Faust works. And that's not how functional programming language uh, works. So I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna go into more details about that for now, you know, because we're, we're gonna have plenty of time for this. And you see that when you make a mistake, uh, there is an error message, you know, and, uh, and here it's not happy because it doesn't know what this is. You know, it's normal because there is no semicolon to uh, conclude this line. So, you know, if I get rid of that, then the error will just go away, you know, and, um, and, uh, and that's it. So um, if you don't have more questions, I think we're done for today. Um, so there's, um, just before we go, uh, if you go on the course website, there's a uh, lab that you can start looking at. Uh, and uh, and we'll, we'll continue this on Monday, right? So, uh, but uh, but if you if you want to start looking at the lab, you know, like maybe it's a good idea, you know. Like, and uh, so just uh, just look at the lab, you know, and uh, maybe just like try to go through these different steps, you know. Like we already did some of it here today, and uh, and we'll continue on Monday. And um, and there is an assignment uh, that will be due on next Wednesday. Don't worry, it's a very easy assignment. Uh, you basically don't really have to uh, like give us anything for that assignment. You know, that's why it's assignment zero. So, uh, so, uh, so, you know, like it's basically just you like playing around with Faust, you know, like, and, uh, and there is nothing like very, um, you, you don't have to give us anything. Like there is no deliverable for, for, for this assignment, you know, like, so, so it's pretty, pretty open-ended. Assignment one, which will be due on April 14th, uh, will have a deliverable. Okay, so uh, but there there is time for that. Okay, cool. Do you have any uh, any questions before before we go? Yeah, I mean maybe a quick question. Um, how do you, how do you deal with uh, like amplitude, or, or like the gain um, just to reduce it? I mean I, I saw it's probably on the on the lab, but. Yeah, so it, it's very uh, it's very straightforward. So uh, so if you want to change the amplitude of uh, of a sound that you generate, you just multiply it by a number uh, between zero and one, right? Uh, so uh, so here, uh, if you want to change the amplitude of the sound wave, um, for example, if you want to divide it by two, you can just say multiply zero point five, right? And uh, or multiply 0 0.1, you know, and, and we can actually try it. So 0 0.1, 0 0.5. And 
And then of course, you can use a slider to control that. So you could say H slider, and then uh, you could call it gain, okay? And uh, the default value of gain is one, the minimum is zero, the maximum is one, and the step is 0 0.01. And then I can use that here. Uh, and so now I'm multiplying uh, my sawtooth wave by G, which is a value between zero and one with a step of 0 0.01. Now, if I run the program, I can control the amplitude of the sound that I'm generating. So now we almost have a real musical instrument, but uh, but I, I don't want to give up everything for now. You know, like so so the next step will be uh, will be next. Uh, uh, next uh, Monday. So that does that answer your question, Asano? Or yes, thank you. Yeah. Thanks.